Bioaccumulation is defined as the increase in concentration of a substance in an organism or parts of an organism as it moves through the food chain. Its process is when a toxic chemical is in its body of an organism. It will accumulate in the body of an organism. When another animal eats this animal, the chemical will accumulate in the body of the new animal, and the process continues, thus bioaccumulation. Biomagnification is an increase in concentration of a toxic substance in the food chain, as well as other organisms in the ecosystem. Its process is if a grasshopper eats a plant infected with pesticides, then a fish eats that grasshopper, then an eagle eats that fish. Biomagnification means that the eagle will suffer a greater dose of pesticides than a grasshopper did. History of Bioaccumulation The history of persistent bioaccumulation in toxic chemicals, or PBTs, is traced from the 1825 synthesis of chemical benzene hexchloride, BHC, to the current efforts to remove persistent organic pollutants, POPs, from our environment. In the 1930s, new users were sought for chlorine, leading to the discovery of a number of chlorinated chemicals, including DDT, a common pesticide. Beginning in the 1960s, however, concerns were identified from the food chain biomagnification of DDTs and other PBTs, and their advice health effects on reproduction in organisms, such as falcons and eagles. In addition, these compounds were being detected in geographical locations, far from their production and use. These toxins arise from, as unintended products of industrial process and, or combustion. Although a large number of chlorinated compounds have been isolated from natural sources, including marine organisms, it is their production and widespread distribution from their sources that is of concern. History of Biomagnification The first data demonstrating food web biomagnification was generated in the chlorinated insecticide of plankton, fish, and birds from Clear Lake, California. Multiple applications for the pesticides in the 1950s. Food web biomagnification was well established for multiple aquatic systems in the 1960s, although it was not until the 1980s that the thermoniatic criteria of biomagnification was tested and was used for the fields of data. A number of mechanisms have been proposed to the account of for biomagnification. The gastrointestinal magnification model and recent amendments to this model are outlined as well as alternative non dietary mechanisms that can lead to similar and potentially confounding observations of biomagnification. Conflicts surrounding the issue of bioaccumulation. Increased cultural pollution causes change in ecosystem, namely due to species adaptation to stressing environmental conditions. It is important to study the phenomenon of pollution such as increased nutrient and heavy metal load and its impact on living organisms. As bioaccumulation and biomagnification of such elements along trophic chains increase the toxicity of the aquatic environment over time. Hydrothermal environments are extraordinary scenarios that high concentrations of metals that arise from discharge of sulfurides. Conflicts surrounding the issue of biomagnification. One of the most important environmental consequences of ecosystem dynamics is biomagnification. Many substances have been shown to bioaccumulate, including the pesticide DDT. DDT was a commonly used pesticide before its dangers became known. In some aquatic ecosystems, organisms from each trophic level consume many organisms of the lower level, which caused DDT to increase in birds that ate fish. Thus, the birds accumulated sufficient amounts of DDT to cross fragility in their eggshells. This effect increased egg breakage during nesting, which was shown to have adverse effects of these bird populations. The use of DDT was eventually banned in the United States in the 1970s. An example of a widespread toxin contributing to these problems are endocrine distributors. An endocrine distributor is any substance, natural or manufactured, that endanger the endocrine system of organisms. This uh, includes proteins of the body, such as any glands, hormones, or other cellular receptors. Endocrine distributors can be found in everyday products, such as plastic bottles, detergents, cosmetics, pesticides, and even food. They can enter the body through the air or water. These items release toxins can cause disruptive health effects to the bodies of all organisms, including humans. There are many developmental, reproductive immunes, and neurological problems. There are four ways endocrine disruptors can affect the body. They can reduce production of hormones, affect the release of hormones, counteract hormones, or speed up metabolisms of a hormone. Though endocrine distributors can pollute in many ways, they can cause problems if they enter a water stream. Smaller organisms will be infected 
and when these organisms are consumed by large organisms, the toxins accumulate in the food chain. This happens because heterotrophs must consume many organisms due to energy loss between trophic levels. For example, DDT is an endocrine distributor that infects areas of the Mississippi River. The photosynthetic plankton will use this water for photosynthesis, and in the process it will consume, for instance, 5 ppm of DTT for ounce per plankton. Then small fish eat these plankton, they may consume a total of 25 ppm of DTT each. Large fish which consume the small fish also become infected. At the end of the chain, the large fish are eaten by organisms such as birds and whales. This means even small amounts of endocrine distributors in the lower atrophic levels can lead to dangerous levels of distributors in top predators like birds, sharks, and even humans. The DDT accumulates as it grows up in the food chain. It is in higher amounts in the top predators because they eat many infected organisms throughout their lives. The Missouri River is where all our waste goes, but people didn't know about this till the 1980s when people started noticing about the harmful trash in the Missouri River, abandoned garbage put in that water, and machines used to store oil, mud, and fluids nearly 50 years ago. After the land eroding the Missouri River, all the waste no North Dakota pollution affects aquatic species. It affects the grass, it affects the water that we drink and use to irrigate the crops that we eat and even the water we give to the animals. Two contributing factors to bioaccumulation and biomagnification are urban sprawl and rising consumption levels. Urban sprawl is defined as the uncontrolled expansion of urban and suburban developments into surrounding rural areas. The process of urban sprawl has existed ever since the first cities have emerged. Examples include the city of Ur, which existed nearly 6,500 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia, and Rome during the Christian era. In Rome, nearly one million people lived in an enclosed six-mile area. This caused the poorer citizens to begin to move from the city center to the outer section. This process has repeated throughout the years in modern cities such as Atlanta, Chicago, and Las Vegas, and is still seen today in America. As urbanization occurred, farmers moved out of rural areas to find jobs in the city. In fact, between 1982 and 1997, America converted nearly 25 million acres of rural land into developed land, including land for freeways, factories, strip malls, airports, and suburban residential housing. As a city becomes more and more populated, it eventually expands, and if this expansion is not managed, it could lead to disastrous consequences. Sprawl is caused by rapid population growth, lack of planning, consumer preferences, and improved infrastructure. The expansion of new infrastructure, including sewers, roads, and highways, eventually leads to a new transportation hub. As a result, a commercial center develops around this area. Suburban areas can cause stormwater runoff, which is when stormwater carries dangerous chemicals into surrounding bodies of water. Urban sprawl introduces new impervious surfaces, that is, surfaces that cannot be penetrated by water. This includes suburban housing and rooftops, parking lots, and cities built on concrete and asphalt. Since these cities are built on concrete and asphalt, water cannot sink into the land. As a result, this water cannot sink into underground aquifers. Aquifers are natural filters that trap sediment and other particles, including endocrine disruptors. But since urban developments do not allow water to sink into the ground, rain eventually causes runoff. Since this water cannot sink, the rain produces runoff and picks up sediments and pollutants such as gasoline, lawn chemicals, heavy metals, paint spills, motor oils, wet waste, construction site erosion, and other pollutants. Pollutants. They eventually lead these pollutants to the nearest body of water, which eventually streams to the ocean and affects animals such as salmon and whales. Urban sprawl leads to an increase in transportation. As a result, there are more car owners, and this increases traffic. Cars produce air and water pollution. They can also contribute to creating smog. In fact, cars and trucks are the biggest source of cancer-causing air pollution. They release 12 billion pounds of toxic chemicals each year. That's almost 50 pounds per person. In addition to this, cars release transmission fluids, lubricants, oils, and exhaust, which can be damaging to the environment. Not only this, but urban sprawl eventually leads to loss of biodiversity and wild habitats. Some contemporary cities now experiencing problems of urban sprawl include Nashville, Tennessee, and Greenville, South Carolina. In addition to urban sprawl, consumption levels are also contributing to bioaccumulation. Across the globe, humans are eating more. In fact, in 2012, a single American ate 166 pounds of poultry per person a year. An increase in food consumption leads to an increase in food production. Agriculture could be detrimental to the environment since it releases fertilizers and manure, which can both have high levels of endocrine disruptors. In addition to this, coal consumption is projected to grow at about 2.5% per year over the next 20 years. As cities around the globe begin to industrialize, fossil fuel consumption increases. This can affect the air, water, and land, as combustion and greenhouse gases can cause high levels of pollution. Consumption of everyday items, such as beauty products, is also increasing. Many daily commodities can cause pollution and release endocrine disruptors into the environment. Hair products, cosmetics, cleaning products, kitchen products, and canned foods can be full of endocrine disruptors. 
In contrast to urban sprawl, there is smart growth. Smart growth is the management of the construction of towns and cities. One organization, Smart Growth America, is currently engaged in researching, advocating for, and leading coalitions to bring smart growth practices to more communities nationwide. The foundation works to make the American dream possible through eliminating the pollution seen with urban sprawl. But there are many things you can do as an individual to help prevent bioaccumulation and biomagnification. To soften the flood of endocrine disruptors and to try to eliminate bioaccumulation, one can make a multitude of changes in their own behaviors. First of all, a person can alter the way they may obtain their food. One can boycott or deny money to large farming corporations who leave a large amount of endocrine disruptors in the environment. This is because larger companies gather their food from plantations or farms far away from the consumers of the produce. This causes the companies to use more resources like gasoline that will release possible endocrine disruptors in the water or air. Factory farming accounts for 37 percent of all methane emissions, which is 20 times more prone than CO2 as a greenhouse gas. Unfortunately, these farms also require large quantities of pesticides, fertilizers, and herbicides to run. Manure is also an another large problem as it contains salt and heavy metals. These products can release toxins and cause bioaccumulation near its water source. Unlike these large corporations, local markets require low amounts of resources to transport, control their manure, and products are often organically grown. If everyone owned and dr driven their own cars, the environment in large will be in danger. The byproducts of cars normally are dangerous and will get into the environment. Instead, a person can either use public transportation or walk such bike. Public transportation can be a good choice for it can largely reduce the amount of gasoline being used in the area. Each car uses a medium amount of gasoline to transport each individual person, but a form of public transportation is different. Public transportation can transport a large amount of people at one time with only a large amount of gas, which is more gas. For example, 20 people each can use a gallon of gasoline a day because they use cars, or all 20 people can ride a bus that use, uses 5 gallons a day. Compared to one car, a bus is not efficient, but compared to all the cars, the budget is very efficient. The other option is walking or biking, which both do not require gas to function, therefore reduces your personal use of gas. For example, a car will use one ga gallon of gas a day while biking, to your destination does not use any gasoline. You can also use biodegradable products to help prevent bioaccumulation and biomagnification. Products which do not quickly degrade are sent to landfills. Nearly 400 million tons of trash are generated by Americans on a yearly basis. Unfortunately, even with extensive maintenance, the disposed products in the landfills still can pollute the surrounding environment. In March of 2000, 82% of all landfills in the U.S. had leaking issues. Toxins, including endocrine disruptors from trash, soap, detergents, and sanitizers, can infect the organisms living in the area. Landfills also release methane and infect groundwater. Thus, by buying biodegradable products, there is a lower possibility of a product infecting the surrounding water streams since the products will break down soon after.